almost on the ball, right on time with this whole thing. <laughs> That's the it. key, right? You always wanted to be right on time. Oh, yeah, I got to make sure this volume's all the way down. Right, all the way down with the volume. I'm going to yep. do the same on mine. All right. Should I adjust that, or how does that like that? I can't hear you on the phone, though. You can't. Mm-hmm. Sorry, everybody. A little bit of technical difficulty. Check, Don't check, worry. check, check, check. You can't hear me? Mm -mm. Nope. Your volume's all the way down or no? Yeah, no, my, my volume's up. Your volume's all the way up. You can't yeah. hear me. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, what is good with technology? Sorry, everybody. We'll, we'll, get this, we'll get this going here in a sec. But um, we're getting ready. This is going to be episode number 14 of the Open Heart Collective. My guest today. Check, check. Can you hear me? I got. I don't got you on. I don't have you on Instagram. Hold on. Hold oh, on. Let me do this. Hold on. All right. What about now? Can you hear me? No, I don't. Mm -mm. I don't hold know. On. I'm going to boot you off of there. Okay. All right. So, hey, everybody. A little bit of tech difficulties this morning. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get this shit figured out. Hold on. That's how it always is. Boom. Adding. Because sometimes I just got to... Add people and remove people. Oh, adding. I guess sometimes I just gotta add yeah, people and remove people. So. Waiting for my special guest to arrive. Can you hear me now? I got you now. Okay. Oh, so I had you. you. No? All right, Instagram. We're just gonna do this thing over on Facebook. So. Oh, no, I feel so bad. No, right. I think, which is weird. Can you guys on Instagram hear Bobby at all? I don't know. All these people are joining too. I know. That's why I, I feel bad that it's not actually working. Um, hold on. I'm going to kill this feed real quick. Be back. Go on. Man, we had like, a, we had 11 viewers in that, that, that quick period of time. Um, not this card. All right, cool. So we'll try this again. Mm -hmm. Live. Sorry, Facebook. We'll get to you guys in a second. Um, go back to live. All right, I'm on live. You don't have like your AirPods connected uh, to that, do you? No. Okay. I'll make sure my Bluetooth is off. Um. All right, we're going to get this figured out one way or the other. Sorry, everybody on Facebook. A little bit of tech difficulties right, this morning. Out one way or the other. All right. Boom. Sorry, everybody All on right. Facebook. A little bit of tech difficulties this morning. Do you think maybe people can hear me? They just, you can't hear me for whatever reason? or I don't know. We'll, we'll wait. We'll, just, we'll see. Yeah. See, now I can hear you. You can hear me on that? Oh, shit. Now I can't hear you. I heard you for a split second. And then you were going. Yo, 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 yo. Everybody on Instagram, can you hear me? Yo. Ten people. This is so Anybody. weird. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So you can't hear me at all? <laughs> I'll unplug your headphones and see if it still works. Yeah, we'll try that. For the, for the unplug the um the Instagram, whatever oh. you have plugged into your phone. Nope. Hey, can, can anybody hear me? Oh wait, I'm getting thumbs up. Can you hear me? De um, can anybody hear me on this thing before we get this thing fired up? Yeah. Is Does anybody? Maybe, able I think to it's. Hear? I think it's just Phil's actual mic or headphones, maybe. That's weird because it's never had this problem before. Can anybody hear? Anybody? Bobby. Dimitri, can you hear me? Mason, Mason, can you hear me? Testing. Can you actually hear the audio? Before we get this thing fired up, I need somebody to give me the green light. Right. I don't think they Mason, can hear me. Can you guys hear can you guys hear him? Check, check. Can anybody Everybody's hear me? Everybody's saying hi, but nobody's saying can they hear me? Hello, hello. No, Mason said no. Okay. Okay. That's <laughs> what the fuck? 
What's yeah? Is your phone charging? We cannot hear Bob. A. Yeah, it's plugged into my Mac to charge. That could be oh, the why. I, I got an idea. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. This is. See, I knew it wasn't my setup. All right, everybody on Facebook and everybody on Instagram who can hear me. Um, this is episode number 14 of the Open Heart Collective the series all around mental health, all around humans just needing to be better humans. So um, give us a minute while we go through a little bit of these tech difficulties. We're about to go to one second. One second. Check, check. Can you hear me now? Mm-mm. No. I don't understand what the fuck is going on. <laughs> it's now and now it's plugged into just the so weird. I've not encountered this yet. What the fuck? Go ahead, talk, Phil. Yeah, I mean, can you guys hear me? I Can you hear me? Well, I got a fucking X out of this. I don't know what the fuck is going on. <sighs> Killing my buzz, iPhone and technology. This is so strange, guys. My sincerest of apologies for this. Facebook, you're going to have to, like, go about several minutes into the video for us to really get started. Um, sorry about that. But... In the meantime, I'll talk about um, the previous guests that we have had. Um, In the meantime, so, I'll talk about um, the previous I guests. Hear that. Hmm. You. I, re- I requested. You request. Go live. Please, for the love of God. Can, can you hear me? I try again. Can you hear me? God, I hear you for a split second, then I lose you. I don't understand why. <laughs> no reasoning. None. <sighs> this is really all right. Let let let's get into the weeds of it. We'll we'll set up another time for for Instagram chat, but Instagram. Go and head over to my Facebook page right now. The link is in the profile to catch the interview. This uh, is the last last shot. That's not last shot. Last shot. All right. You go live. Live. Test. Uh, Come on. Two. One. Two. Please tell me you can hear me. I can hear you. For more than one second. Can you hear me? It dies out. Yep. I don't fucking understand. (laughs) <laughs> wow that's so annoying all right instagram we'll see you over on facebook the episode is live there now so the link unreal. is in the profile check it out unreal sorry about that dude i don't know what, I don't dude, know what you're, you're good on. you're good you're good i'm not worried bro we'll make all it right. Work. Cool. all right so sorry facebook i know you had to wait a few minutes because we had like tech issues and whatnot but I am honored to be back for episode number 14, 14. of the Open Heart Collective with my uh, new friend, Bobby. Or What's up, man? I'll have him introduce himself because I know wow. you got this, like, you you, you do it your way. So. <laughs> I don't even know. I, you had sent me the email yesterday, last night, and I read it, and it was like, uh, you know, think of like an introduction for yourself. You're going to have a chance. And I sat there and I thought about it. I was like, I don't even know how to come <laughs> into this. I just, man, I'm just a. Uh, my name is Bobby Holbert. A lot of people know me as Bob A. Uh, 24 years young. Host a podcast. Run a bunch of YouTube content. Full time Uber driver. Uh, yeah, man. I don't know. I just uh, I'm just uh, having fun, trying to make the best of uh, of everything that's going on. I live in LA now, which has been a dream come true to me. And nice. uh, where are you from? I'm from Chicopee, Massachusetts. Nice. Yeah, so nice. the western part of Massachusetts. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put this on live on my live so we can get some pub for you. I'm going to put uh, the heart collected too so I can direct the traffic. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm from Chicopee, Massachusetts, and then I moved out here uh, back in September. So it's, nice. been, uh, it's been amazing so far. Oh, yeah. 
So I saw a couple weeks ago, which led to this whole thing in the in the first place was yep. you had posted on the purpose of, purpose in youth purpose of youth the, the, in the, the youth. youth. Yep. And um, the youth. You posted on that page. You got really deep about mental health, mm-hmm. and that I I had to reach out to you. I mean, it, it that caught me, and um, the entire ethos around this this program this 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 content series is as human beings whether it's a musician an entrepreneur uh, somebody who works nine to five for somebody else we don't talk about mental health enough yeah i agree or worse yet we only talk about it after something happens we talk mm-hmm. about it after we lose chester bennington we talk about it after we lose chris cornell we talk about it after a school shooting. We don't talk about it before. Which happened today. I don't know if you know that. I, saw, I, I was kind of weirded out when I was working out this morning. There's, there's currently a Texas shooting right now. Uh, wow. So I was like, well, this is terrible time. I mean, terrible. I mean, there's never t- good timing for anything like that. But I was like, I'm right. literally about to do a podcast about this subject. But uh, Right. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. You're good. Um we don't why I don't understand why we is we why we don't talk about it. Especially I mean a lot of us are coming out of like this Gary V world space and world right now, right? All of us yeah. kind of get connected because of being in that community. And this is a community where we're talking about being proactive, being on the offense, being on the hustle. Right. Yeah. But yeah. the one thing that we are not on the offense about, the one thing that we are not hustling about, the one thing that we are not doing enough of is our own mental health. Mm which is so fucking weird to me because when this isn't right, nothing yeah. is right. hundred percent. So like, how did you come across the video? I follow your page. <laughs> oh, you follow the page. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess that's more of the question of how did you, how did you find me? That's what I'm more curious about. Um, so we, I came in touch with you, I think because of I mean, we're, we're in similar circles. As far as social mm-hmm. space goes, I mean, I, I've done some podcasts with like Anchor Nation, and I think that led me into Empo- the Empower Good group or Empower Good podcast. And I, I really don't know, <laughs> to be honest okay. with you. That's why I mean, that's how it is with social media and like the network and the world and and how it goes. Um, right. Well, you know, it's, I mean, so I, I'm trying to think of what inspired me to even make that video, but you know. I realized that there, I, I see, see, this is the thing. I realized that there are people that really have some very deep mental issues. Like I was even thinking about this yesterday because I, I know coming into this conversation, I was like, we're literally about to talk this, about this for an hour and I have no idea how to even put this into words. But, um, you know, I'd say like in a week, 90, 99, 95% of my week, I'm like this, I'm mountaintop peaks, mm-hmm. energy, like I'm good to go, confidence through the roof. And there's like a 5% time in the week where just random uh, random times where I, I'm not, it's not like I feel down or I don't feel confident in myself, but there's times where I just, I think everybody has this where you, literally everybody I think has this moment where you just like question the things you're doing. Uh, right. You know, just have like this, this mental chatter is what I call it. Um, and I'm I, what inspired me to make the video was more like I want to, at the end of the day, through the content that I put to the world, I mean, I wanted to inspire people. I wanted to make people happy. I want people to, I right. wanted to make people smile, cry, everything in between. And that was just to me a subject that I, I see from afar as a big issue that I want to maybe just put a little bit of time and attention into it. I'm not saying I'm going right. to be the next leader for the mental health movement, but I think, I think to get people to talk about it more or to just be not even to talk about it more, but to feel comfortable having the conversation if they need to, then right. all right, if I can, you know, put my two cents to the world, then then so be it. Right. I mean, and, and I'm not a mental health professional either. I mean, yeah. we, we haven't been connected that long, so you don't really know my story. Everybody listening to this or watching yeah. this, if you don't know my story, like I started a record label seven years ago. Mm-hmm. I, I did it myself for the first four and a half years. Like, I've gone, but I personally have gone through a lot of mental health issues or I've been tied to people who have gone, been going through them. 
from depression, anxiety, to stress, to, to eating disorders, to, um, to self harm, all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's a heavy place. Yeah. Right. Like holding on and the fact that I know all of this stuff about all of these people is daunting mm. mentally, mm. but again, the whole ethos around or the whole mission around this, this series, my story doesn't res- always resonate with you, but your story will touch somebody else. Yeah. So yes, yeah. that I makes mean, sense. I, what I mean, is I just, what is my story? Ah, uh, that's a great question. Keeping my in story. mind that your story is still building. And we yeah, for sure. I mean, for sure. I mean, I grew up, I mean, it's funny looking back on it. I grew up arguably, I think, in one of the best environments possible. I grew up in uh, Chickabee, Massachusetts. There's population 55,000, two high schools. Uh, you know, my mother, my, my, my mother uh, has been in banking for 30 plus years. My father has been a correctional officer for 30, almost 30 plus years. I grew up with a younger sister, two years younger than me. And uh, we grew up in, I think, like the perfect city. You had parts of the city that were wealthier. Um, and then you had parts of the city where, like, the projects. Uh, right. I was right in the middle. I, I grew up, you know. As most I was, of us are. Yeah, I grew up. I had always food on the table. My parents were always, you know, pushing me to do the things that I wanted to do. They always backed me. They did. They would do anything and everything to make sure that I was happy. Right. Uh, so, I, you know. Fast forward, I end up uh, go to, going to college. High school was a very, to paint a little bit more picture of that, high school was a very uh, outgoing person. You know, I was, uh, I ran for class president, didn't get it. Uh, the life was, of the party kind of guy, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could say it like that. I just, I w- I've always been a, a people's person. So I always just made sure I was like good ties right. with everybody. And then I went to college my freshman year to LaSalle College in Newton, Mass., uh, spent a year there, then I transferred over to Bentley University in Waltham, Mass., mm-hmm. where I ended up graduating with a marketing degree. Uh, but my story really kind of like to how I'm doing, what I'm doing now with the purpose in the youth and all this content was uh, when I graduated in May 2016, kind of saw this like pivotal moment of like, do I just get a job to get a job or do I try to figure out like what my passion is, what my purpose is? And so I had an idea to start a podcast, ended up launching it that the end of that summer. So August 31st, 2016. And then from there, I just stayed. I just put my head down and just started talking to right. artists, DJs, producers, entrepreneurs, vloggers, people that had found their passion and kind of right. just wanted to understand why they did what they did. And then, you know, one thing led to another, just it's it just has rolled and become something bigger than I thought it would have. Uh, right. But it's always stayed true to why I started. It was to find my passion. Um, but yeah, I mean, my story is just you know, just a guy, just somebody who's just trying to figure it out. Uh, who's who's been get, given everything needed to to figure out this world, but right. not given enough that he's hungry, and he's humble, mm-hmm. and you know, he's a good person, and he wants to impact people. Like I said, in any way possible, I want to make content that makes people laugh. I want to make content that inspires people. I want to make content that might literally make you cry of joy or of like realness. I want to make right. content that impacts people on every level. Right. Uh, and that's kind of what I've shaped myself into who I am today. Awesome, man. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so incredible. I mean, I, I've talked to, now 14 people on the show Mm -hmm. and everybody's story is different, but everybody's story is the same. We're all trying to find our purpose. We all, I mean, everybody I've had on is really wanting to, to, to focus on legacy and focus on impact and creating change and, and helping other people. And Mm -hmm. almost everybody has had this like altruistic nature about them. Yeah. But which makes it really interesting because we're all different people. We all yeah. do different things. Like I don't drive Uber, yeah. but like, but I mean, I, I, but we all talk to people. We all working with everybody. We all, we all absorb their energy and in, 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 in people's energies in different ways. Yeah. Which leaves an impact on us. And yeah. um, I mean, the topic of mental health as, as everybody knows is not a fun one, whether you guys are listening to this, 
are watching it or listening to it because again, it's available on the audio side of things too. It's all about utilizing our stories to help other people. Yeah. And, 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 and go ahead. I don't want to cut you off. Go ahead, please, <laughs> please. I, I, I please continue. I mean, I, I came out of la- uh, Tuesday's episode because I air these every Tuesday and every Friday. Mm-hmm. And, um, I came out of Tuesday's episode where I barely talked. So, um, I'm fine with that, by the way, because this is not the. This <laughs> I, know, is not I, know the how it I know how it is because when I'm doing my podcast, I literally talk for one percent. They they talk for ninety nine. This, this but, is not the Ryan show. Yeah, Everybody I want to followed my comment, comment for long enough. The comment you just made about um, mental health isn't fun to talk about. It isn't fun, and that's what I want to change. That was like the purpose of the video that I made. Like it was, it was about like talk about it. Make, make, make it fun to be like, yo, honestly, I'm not motivated or I, I have this right. going on around with me and just talk about it. I mean, you know, I'm, I, I've gotten to the point in my life where I'm very confident and I'm very open and I will literally tell right. people how I feel and I don't, I don't care. And I, it, I know it, it, it hasn't always been like that. And that's why, right. I, that's again, why I kind of like made the video because I recognize I always, I haven't always been this way. I haven't always been this confident. And I think if people kind of just recognize that everybody has their own, their own issues, their own things that are going through their mind that make it fun to talk about, be like, be okay with sharing people about how you feel. And right. it, it'll never hurt to be honest. I think if you're honest with people, I don't think it can ever hurt you. I think it can only right. help you. Um, I agree. Um, the to 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 build on that so and it's not i don't think it's about making it fun as Mm -hmm. much as that it's about making it not scary yeah right because yeah i mean if if you're if you are a depressed person or you're a person that's struggling with an eating disorder talking about it is not fun yeah i agree talking about it is scary yeah so how do we make it less scary how can we make how do we as the others who interact on that level um how do we make it less scary for them to open up to or for them to open up to us about people right? like people like you who are creating platforms to show people the conversation that's what it comes down to social media um i think it's i think the real key is social media just because of how how uh you know you could put something on instagram right. and that could be seen by somebody in iowa who is going through a tough time and then they see your video and they feel better so uh i think the best way is to get people to just talk about it more right platforms like this that are being built strategically to talk about it or um you know i i always i always recognize too that i can't change the world myself you can't right. change the world yourself and i'm not gonna I'm not going to not do something because I don't think I can impact the world. So I just look at what do I have? What resources do I have? How can I positively influence these people that might be following me? Whether I have 500 followers, a thousand followers, it doesn't matter. It's just about really what you have access to and how can you impact the people that are looking at you? So it's like, you know, like I said, we're not all, we can't all just change the world overnight. Uh, but if somebody like yourself, somebody like me, people that are able to just have the conversation and put content out there once in a while or all the time about the, the actual topic, then I think right. that's how, that's how you end up making a change and making people less scared to talk about it. Cause right. you know, it, and I take that back even saying like, I wanted to make it fun cause it's never going to be fun. I just oh, want it to be something. I want it to be something that people can just, talk about and be okay with and uh it's and that's so not always that's not oh yeah and it's not scary it shouldn't it should never be scary i mean I, I don't know i it's uh i just look at i look at life as this this like magical game right like that we the first first of all if anybody's watching this that lives in the u.s we have the golden ticket already like this right. is a huge playing field. Where are you? Where are you based in? I don't think I asked you. That. Uh just outside of Rockford, Illinois, or just outside right. of Chicago and Rockford. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, 
look at all the opportunity within this country. There's opportunity around the world. Don't get me wrong. But the opportunity within this country, you can literally do anything you want as long as you follow the rules here. You don't steal. You don't hurt people. You don't do certain things. As long right. as you follow the rules, you can accomplish anything you want. And uh, I just try to I try to look in under at the fact that this is a one shot deal. And sometimes people will get like kind of weirded out when you like talk about like live one life and YOLO and you're going to die one day. But it, it's, it's like, really like, this is as Gary would say, this is a one in 400 million. What is he always a trillion? Yeah. 400 trillion chance that you have this chance. And uh, you know, you have to understand that you're not going to feel great every day. You're not going to feel, you know, there's going to be mornings when you wake up and you, you just, you're like, eh, I don't know if I want to chase after that thing or if I want to do X, Y, and Z, but I just look at it as like one, you got to live your life one day at a time, 24 hours at a time. You know, what can you do right. today that will positively impact you or positively help you? Um, right. And just try to set goals high. And that's, that's where it becomes a game. That's where it makes life fun because I have this running list on my phone that I'll share with you guys, the, the listeners. And it sounds literally absurd, but it, it makes life fun because I, I wake up and I have a purpose for what I'm chasing after. And these, these goals are so like, so far away from grabbing, but it, it gives me a reason to get up. So long-term it would be um, give a TED talk, work out with the rock, train with Conor McGregor, be a guest on the Ellen show, be a guest on the school of greatness podcast, build a relationship with Gary V give a TED, uh, give a talk in front of my high school, Chickabee high school, um, be both mentally and physically in shape, uh, travel all over Europe. So it's, uh, Netflix series cover on GQ. So it's like just the setting, <laughs> sitting down and just writing down goals of things that literally seem impossible. And then waking up and realize and just doing whatever you got to do today to put you right. one step forward. And this, that was the, uh, and this, because I mean, I, you're 24, 24. I'm 10 years older than you. Okay. I wish I was thinking this way at 24. Um, I feel like I'm 24 now. That's great. But you look 24. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, it's all that you guys can't see all the gray hairs. Most <laughs> of you guys are listening. You can't uh, see come me. On. But, come but on. Um, it's the, like just one step at a time. Like the one problem task. is one task at a time, one thing at a time, right? Yeah. Starting a record label. Starting anything is scary. Yes. Right? Because yes. what you do is when you start that thing, you put yourself out there. Yeah. And you're like, world, look at me. And then sometimes the world says, fuck you. Yeah. Big guy, the way you can curse on the show. Um, <laughs> but like, sometimes the world smacks you down and yeah. says, no, yeah. like, I'm not paying attention. Okay, cool. Like, and get up and try again. Yeah. If I would have, if I would have stayed down, I wouldn't be here today. Right? Like, I wouldn't be blessed to have the opportunity to speak to people like you and to like leave an impact and, and, and help change. Like, I, I go back to one of the um, episodes from a couple weeks ago. I got a message afterwards and this person and this message will live on in me. They said, I, I was watching this and I thought you were talking directly to me. Hmm. That's powerful. That's why I do this. Yeah. That's it. That one person. Yeah. Because if you hear this and you're struggling, like you're not alone. Yeah. That is the biggest overarching issue in the mental health space is you feel like you're alone. Mm -hmm. You're not. Yeah. Like, and Bobby, just like me, I mean, I'm sure that you had those moments where the days are dark, that 5% for you. Oh, yeah. I mean, dude, it's like, you you know, the the other part of, of aiming for these goals so high, right, is that you have to cut out a lot of the fun things, okay? Like, don't get me, like, there's no way that you can work 40 hours a week Go out every Friday, Saturday night, <laughs> Sunday brunch, 
go to the go to the music festival Wednesday night. There's no way that you can do those things and think that the goals that you set so high are just going to arrive at your door. So the other side, right, that a lot of people sometimes don't talk about, and that's that's why through my content, I really try to document the rawness of Friday, Saturday nights. I'm out Uber in the streets. I'll put it on my Instagram story. I put it on my YouTube content. The other the other part is that you want to you want to do the you want you want these goals so high you're gonna have to make the sacrifice and the, the what the darkness comes is those lonely moments of like doing the thing or working a lot or punting what i like to say as gary says punting all the social stuff that you want to be doing and i think what helps me is is having a conversation with myself of just like, is this going to pay out? Right. Like, right. is this going to work in the long, like if I just short term, just sacrifices, make, do the things I need to do for that long term goal, then it's, then it's a no brainer. It's like, why wouldn't I do it? You know? Right. Um, you said something before, I, I don't want to miss, but uh, I forget what you said, what scares you or people are scared to, People are scared to start that thing, right? People are scared to mm-hmm. to uh, to start that podcast, to start that label, whatever. What's scarier than that than starting is regret. Right. Regret of not doing the thing, and right. um, you know, when I think back to when I was starting this, when I was starting to put put a fault like a social media face out there and starting to create content. I was nervous and I was scared because I was like, what are people going to think about me? How are they going to take this content? I don't even know what I'm doing. Uh, (laughs) But I also realized, but thankfully I also realized was that if I don't go through this, this phase of like trying to figure out this content and trying to figure out how to do it, it's going to be scarier when I regret not going for it in 10 years and be like, damn, I should have gone for it. Right. Um, I got very lucky. Also, the comment you said, you know, about I wish I had this mindset at 24. Fortunately, because of the parents I was raised by, they always told me, no matter what it is you do, as long as you love it, we'll support you. Right. And as a kid, when you hear that so many times, you're just like, okay, like, whatever that means is whatever that means. Like, <laughs> right. It, it kind of goes whatever. in one ear and out the other. Exactly. Yeah. But when you hear it so many times, going in and out the other, going in, going out the other, one of them stays in the brain and it stays in the back of your brain. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't come to the front of your mind until uh, the right moment. And the right right moment was when I was graduating and, 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 and telling myself I wasn't just going to take a job and, and, and and do the things that everyone else is telling me to do. I was going to do the thing that I wanted to do. Right. Uh, And that's when I realized like, find the thing I want, I love, but also, if I don't do it now, what am I ever going to do it? Exactly. Exactly. But I mean, yeah, I, it's just, uh, I get it. No, like, like I said, my 5% could be the opposite for some people. It could right. be 95% dark and 5% happy. And I, and I recognize that. And that's why I tried to use the platform that I have. It ain't, the biggest and ain't the smallest. It's right. just mine and, and just put out content that shows that type of stuff, that type of conversation. Right. And, and I, I'm going to, I'm going to contradict you a little bit. Mm-hmm. So in, 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 in the early days in, in, in building, right. Whatever, whatever it is that you're building, I agree that you got to punt a lot of the distraction. I completely agree with that. Yeah. But where I disagree is if you lose that social, if you lose that human interaction, it kind of starts to suck, hmm. right? Because then you never know what kind of idea and inspiration and feedback comes from taking your, that moment out. Yeah. Because if, and I did this dude for five years, I was, I was working 40 hours a week and yeah. then working 40 hours more mm-hmm. because like I had to, Yeah, I was so head down working, but then I lost a lot of shit. Like I lost, I lost time with the kids. Like I lost time with relationships and family because I was all about the work. 
But again, it, it all kind of goes into what TJ was talking about in, in Tuesday's episode. Like, are you running your life efficiency or efficiently? Yeah. So he's got these like core four that you look at. You look at mind, you look at body, you look at relationships, and you look at business and creativity. And then you like, I might actually share this on, on Instagram later today, but um, it was pretty freaking epic what – when you look at it and he was saying that 5% of people are that most people run at 5% efficiency. Hmm. I did my calculation out last night. I run at a 47.75% efficiency across all of those areas. Hmm. So my number is 47. Yeah. But my number needs to be a hundred. Yeah. Right? I mean, so yeah. you got to have the balance. Like, Balance is so key because you can't yeah. have it here and done all the work and then have nobody to share it with because that's a lonely fucking place. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, and you know what? Too, at the end of the day, it really just comes down to looking at yourself in the mirror and asking, what do you want? Yeah. Like, I, I, I really – I understand that what I want is extreme – and then not every other person <laughs> is going to want the same. Well, wait, you know wait, wait, wait a second. You say, so you said give a TED Talk, right? Yeah. Give a TED Talk. I'm right, actually writing these down. Yeah. Uh, you said work out with The Rock. Yeah. Train with Conor McGregor. Conor. Okay. Um, where do I have this? Train. Um, build a relationship with Gary V. Be a guest on the School Brain. It's going to be on the Ellen Show. Um cover of GQ Netflix series. Like I understand that these are extreme goals and that they take a lot of work to get to so that I, that other people aren't going to necessarily need to, to get to these things to, to find. Their their happiness. Happiness. Yeah. And I wouldn't, and I wouldn't say, um, I don't need to get to these destinations to have true happiness, you know? Right. I'm, 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 I'm I, I like every morning when I wake up, I, I've been doing this recently where I just, before I actually get out of bed for like five minutes, I just think about like what's happening, the 24 hours ahead of me, right? Like what am I about to do? Where, like the fact that I live here in LA now, the fact that I live with two good roommates that are very clear headed. Um, I think about all the positive things. Right. And, uh, I mean, that's another thing, right? When you think about what you have versus what you don't have, that's that can also help a lot for um, positivity and feeding people. Especially for you, especially for you young entrepreneurs out there, or you, yeah, you young humans out there, right? Like, or anybody for that matter. I I just say young entrepreneurs and young musicians and young hustlers and all that kind of stuff because they typically it's harder for them to like step away and then mm -hmm. see. Mm. Right. It happened to me earlier. So I was on, I was on a conversation with a licensing company out of Texas, out of Austin. And she was, she started the company a year and a half ago. Mm. And she's like, what's your story? And then I went into it and it was 45 minutes later, we were done. But it was like, when you step back, and you tell it to somebody else and you see how far you've come or what you've accomplished. Yes. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. I said, Holy shit. I, like, I got to pat myself on the back. Yeah. But like, because the, and this is the issue with being head down all the time and being in the weeds of the work all the time. You don't see how far you've come. Yeah. So yeah, cause you are part of the, you, you're seeing you're, you are the one making these things happen. So it's like, you're always on to the next, you're always on to the next piece of content. You're always doing the next podcast. Right. Um, man, it's, it is, uh, I just think what it comes down to is just people have to look at themselves in the mirror. I, I didn't really finish that. I, that what I was trying to say, but like people just need to look at themselves in the mirror and, and be realistic about what they want and, know what 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 it's going to cost um and be okay with the fact that it's going to take time yeah patience is my and, and I my best friend and my worst enemy at the same time I, I i i like patience but patience is so much of a buzzword right now that i really don't like using it yeah but it, 
I, I know what you're saying, but I, I kind of like that people are saying it a lot because when you hear it right. enough, you realize this is going to take time. Right. You know what I mean? Like these moments, I just went to, I went to a, like a, a, a I wasn't, I wouldn't, even, it, it was supposed to be like a release party last night, like an album release party for nice. this artist. And I look at him in this moment, big moment, big project. Right. This is literally 10 years in the making, mm -hmm. you know? So that, and that's what inspires me because if I can see them take a dream and turn to reality, I can do the same. We can do the same. Right. But understanding it ain't going to happen today. It's not going to happen tomorrow, next month, next week, next year. Right. It's, it's just kind of this continuous journey of, just, I think as long as you are making forward steps every single day and know and understand that there are going to be days that you're going to fall and you're, you're going to have more days of those than not, uh, as long as you are able to get back up and keep pushing forward, right? at some point it's going to click. At mm -hmm. some point it's going to, things are going to finally start to go in your direction. The ball is going to roll down the hill. Um, and it's those moments that you have to be grateful for and really like look around for a second and, and take a pause and be like, this is actually happening. Right. Like, I, I actually did this. I actually accomplished this. Right. And unfortunately with, I think the, us humans as time is going and, and technology, mm -hmm. it's changing our brains that, it comes and it's already gone. And then that right. high that high we had is already gone by tomorrow because we're back to what's the next thing. Let's right. keep it moving. Let's keep going. Um, you br you know. brought up you brought up an interesting topic. Um, momentum. Mm -hmm. It's momentum is a really strange thing when you think about it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice when it's going fast, right? Yeah, yeah. But oftentimes when it's fast, it's going down. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Like I, I I was doing the one a vlog episode last year sometime, I think. And I had done it just in a bike ride with my whole family. Okay. And uh, my son and I were like, because we're very competitive. My how, daughter, many, how many kids? How many kids? Two. Two, cool. one of each. They're my, they're, uh, they're, in, they're, they're, they're mini versions of me, which is crazy. It's gotta be so much um, fun. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But like, <laughs> so we were doing this bike ride and my son was complaining on the uphill, mm -hmm. right? That build, that, 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 that constant, like that work, that gr that grind literally, because you're literally grinding gears to go up the hill. Yeah. And, um, but then we would be, then he would be like happy go lucky free in the down, in the down, mm -hmm. right? Only to then have to go back up and back up the hill. So it's like, don't get too comfortable when the momentum is moving really quickly. Yeah. I mean, you obviously you got to keep moving, right? Yeah. But like, be careful with momentum because it's very easy for it to go from up to down. Yeah. It's very easy to let go of the gas and just like see where it takes you. Right. Yeah, you right. gotta. You have to keep. Even when things are going, the momentum is going in your favor. That's when you have to capitalize, and you have that's to. That's when you grind up. even more. Yeah, exactly. That's, and, that's, and I use the term grind loosely, right? Because everybody mm -hmm. hears grind and they think of work. Yeah. Like sometimes you just got, you got to grind in relationships, yeah. right? You gotta you gotta do that for your own mental. Yeah, and. Um, so like, don't always think that when I say grind or hustle or work uh, that it's predicated on work because it's not. Yeah. Um, but like all of these things that you want to do, I don't see why they're so far away, right? Yeah. Like if Summer Silvery, who was a guest on my show, can do something for The Rock, who's to say that you couldn't work out with him? Yeah. <laughs> right? If, if, yeah. If yeah. Frazier can, can meet up, or if my buddy Misha up in uh, – Toronto can meet up and, and be in with Gary V's team. You can do it too. Like yeah. to Connor McGregor, I, I can't say, I can't speak about him. He <laughs> kicked my ass. Um, <laughs> although I've got like a solid 60 pounds on him, if not okay. more. So yeah. I just hold him down. You can hold um, him down. 
but then like Ellen, I like proximity. You're there. Yeah. Um, just appear. Be there. Uh, Lewis Howe. I, I mean, I don't know what it's like to be on his show, but yeah, can only imagine gotta, that. That's the thing. You got to have a story to tell, and I, I and I know I don't have the the story just yet, but that that takes time. Right, and then and then Netflix. Cool. What do you want to do? Like, what's the show? Like a talk, like a talk show. Okay. Cool. Pitch it. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Take a shitty camera. Like, fucking go film a pilot. Yeah. And go and do. Yeah. Right. Like this, we build these things up as such monumental tasks. And when you break them down, they're not that hard. Yeah. Like I was talking with a colleague of mine from from London earlier today, and he was like. Yeah, we're doing this conference. It's all musicians for musicians. I want these six super, I want six superstars. Cool. Who do you know? Well, mm. I'm this far away from Dave Grohl. I, I'm this far away from Billy Gibbons. I'm this far away from Roland. I'm this far away from another artist who are all like that fit these criteria. Yeah. It's a matter of, it's a, so as much of it is, is the work, it's who you know. Yeah. And yeah. who you can know and the relationship, like, this I want. I want to. I want to see you do this. This is a mission that I'm. I'm going to give you, mm. and that that I've done in my social space for a while, and it's it's netted amazing results. Send thank you messages to everybody, like for yeah. no other reason than just saying, "Hey, thank you." Yeah. Hey, yeah. Tony, thank you. Like, and watch what it does for your mind, bro. Yeah. It is amazing. Yeah. Because well, I mean, it, it's it's. You're connecting, and now you're gonna you're gonna get categorically like three or four different types of responses, right? We're gonna mm -hmm. get people that don't respond because people are lazy, yeah. um, or they don't see their messages, or they're rather they'd rather be on Twitter. <laughs> but like, um, and then you'll get the overly enthusiastic, re like reverse. Oh man, thank you. Yeah. But then you'll get the ones in the middle, and those are the important ones. Those are the yeah. ones where the solid relationships happen. Yeah. They're the ones that say thank you for what, with like the question mark at the end or the dot dot dot, because they're like, I don't know what the fuck you're thanking me for. <laughs> yeah, well, I think but it's that starts I think a it's, conversation. It does, and I think it's uh, I think it's important to to do things when it's not expected. You know, obviously, when you do me a favor, I'm gonna say thank you. But when I randomly text you out of the blue and say thank you for this or that people are, are kind of caught in by it. They kind of like, wait, why isn't he or she texting me and saying this right now? And I think the, the unexpected sometimes is more appreciative because you didn't have right. to do that and right. you still did it, you know? Right. And it, can, it makes us human. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. Like we're all controlled by these things right here, myself yeah. included, yeah. that, that if we don't take the time out to do even what we're doing right now, like, there's nobody live watching us right now. We're straight yeah. up just you and me talking. I feel like there's 50,000 watching that right now. You know what? I don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And see, that that's the funny thing is everybody's like, you're doing this because it's kitschy or because it's it, it's it's like people are wanting to start. Like, no, I'm doing this because we need to talk about it regardless of whether one, zero, or 1,000 watch. I yeah. don't care. Yeah. Because guess what? This Facebook will live on. It's going to be bumped to YouTube. It'll be put in audio. Like if people want to listen, go for it. Yeah. But I'm not saying you have to. Yeah. But if you want to get story, if you want to find a way to battle or a sim like connect with somebody who's facing a similar struggle than you as you or has faced a similar struggle that you that you're going through right now, there's no other platform that's doing this. Yeah. I mean, that's what it's about. You have to, and that's why I started my own podcast because I was trying to figure something out for myself and I was also trying to give value to the people. That's right. it's it, that's what it comes down to. It's like if you're doing things for the money or because you, I mean, really, realistically, if you start something because you're like, I can make a lot of money doing it, go for <laughs> it. But I just, I just don't, I don't think it, it works out in your favor because there's a lot of light work I've learned in just two years almost two years with this, it's like there's a lot of legwork that has to happen to even build something before you even make money doing it. So right. Um, right. it's not about numbers at the end of the day. It's just about, once again, like I said, like just putting out content that you genuinely believe in and know that if one person sees it, like you said, you got that DM or the message and it's like, okay, 
I got the mm-hmm. one person that to like be impacted, then that's all you need to keep going. Yeah. So I mean, with, with everything that you've got going on, I'm sure you've encountered people that, that, um, have struggled or been struggling or, or are struggling. Um, what, I mean, what's, what's, what's your, how, how do you respond to, to somebody sending you a DM and saying, especially after that mental health piece, I'm sure you got quite a bit of I'm struggling with, and then ask for help. Like what, how do you take something like that? What, what's your, what's your next step? What's your next move? I think the best thing, and it's helped me a lot, and this is not an ad, uh, but headspace, meditating, that's for sure been a huge, huge help for me because right. with this meditating app, there's a, somebody that talks you through it, but it's not just nice. about, it's not just about like, okay, close your eyes, now breathe, now breathe in, now breathe out. They're actually talking about real life scenarios and different experiences and things right. that are happening in your life that it reminds you like, damn, I should be grateful for this. Or like, damn, my health is good. Or, right. you know, things aren't going the way I want it to go, but keep going. So I haven't really honestly gotten anybody from that video that DM me and was like, yo, I'm struggling with mental health. I, I had it in general. But even then, if, if somebody DMs me and, and just says like, I'm not happy with life or I'm just, I'm in a down. My first thing now is, is meditating. I want people to just try it because right. I think it opens your eyes to being present and just like this, like this is all I'm focused mm-hmm. on right now. And then after this, I'll focus on the next thing I need to. And then you keep going and you keep going. Right. Uh, but it, then it, it goes back to kind of what I said earlier. It's like, what do you want to happen with your life? Like, what is your end goal? Like, I'm not saying you have to have it all figured out. I still don't have it all figured out, but, what do you enjoy doing? Who do you want to be around? Like what motivates you? What do you enjoy in your free time? Like if you, I always, I always say this to people. If they don't know like what their passion is or, cause I talk to so many people in Uber. Like that's, that's my soul. Oh, I can only imagine. So like when you met, when you, going back again, when you had made a comment about like, you know, working and balancing social life, I'm like, my man, you don't even know. But so my social <laughs> life is Uber because I'm talking to all these customers. But one, one thing that I always talk to people about in, when they bring up, uh, you know, they don't really have it figured out or whatever. It's like, if you could get paid to do anything in this world, what would you want to do? If money wasn't an option either, like there right. wasn't an issue. Like you want to go travel the world. You want to be a musician. Like, ex- honestly, what, what is it, that thing? And if whatever that thing is, that's the goal. Now let's reverse engineer how we get there. So if you right. want to be somebody who gets to travel for free, then so I think I think the best thing that I can do to people when they're messaging me and they're like not feeling, you know, positive or they feel like things aren't going the way they want them to go, I just try to be real about you can change your life around any moment. Mm-hmm. I know that things right now might seem like it, it couldn't get any worse, but it, it'll get better. Uh just changing the way you see things. Like I know things aren't going the way you want it to go, but you're ha- you're texting right now. You have two fingers to text. Mm-hmm. Are you breathing right now? Did you have right. a meal? Did you wake up in your bedroom? Like these little things can make a difference in the way you see things. And you're like, wait, right. I'm complaining about this, but meanwhile, there's literally a shooting in Texas. You know what I mean? Like I I saw right. that. I saw this girl's face as I'm getting on the treadmill and I literally said to myself, I can't even imagine what, what is going through like this girl's head right now. Right. Right. Like to be part of that, you know? So it's like, it, it's all perspective. And when you think, Absolutely. when you think, uh, when you think, your life is wor- the worst and it, and it can't get any better. Just know that there's somebody else out there that has the worst off. And you just right. got to make this, these steps today to, to get you to a better, a better tomorrow. I just had an epiphany. Mm-hmm. Boom. Light bulb moment. Hold, hold on. Let me, let me, let me adjust the camera. Yeah. Boom. Right there. Light bulb. Um, 
I love it. Um, so you, you said something that I caught my eye. There's somebody out there that's worse off than you. Yeah. This is how you combat that. This is how you fight off that. Like, I'm not, a, I'm alone. I'm alone in this. Like there's nobody else out there. Like I'm struggling. Guess what? If you go and you see that person who's worse off than you, seek them out, mm. find them, mm. make their life better. Because when you can do that, guess what? Makes your life better. Yours is going to get better just by fucking proxy to the circumstance. Yeah. yeah. Because and granted, you've got to be a little bit selfish, like from time to time, because when you're not right, like I'm have I'm a, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of a big change in my, my life here right now that mm-hmm. I'm feeling anxious about, but I needed an order for, so if this is step three, I need this for step three so that I can achieve four five and six. Mm. Right. Mm. I don't necessarily want to do it, but I'm seeing the opportunity in the circumstance. Mm. So like, okay, cool. By me be doing this, I'm able to do this, 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 and this. Um, so I'm like, I'm, I mean, you got to do what's best for you at the end of the day. Right. That's what it comes but, down to. But if you are like, if you identify somebody else that's struggling and you're struggling too, just let them know that they're not alone. So yeah. you can be a resource. Like that's how I bought, that's how I fought through it all. Yeah. Right. I was struggling. I was an alcoholic. I was depressed. I was 250 pounds. I wow. never smiled. I smoked two, two packs of cigarettes a day. Wow. I was unhealthy. But the way that I made myself better is as I helped other people. What was the moment that like made you realize you wanted to change? I was going through a big circumstance with my ex-wife. Um, she struggled with anorexia and bulimia for a decade or more. Wow. Still dealing with the um, the ramifications of that behavior. But um, I was in a job that I loved, but hated the company that I, but disliked the company that I was working for. I'm trying to remove the word hate from my vocabulary. I like that. Um, I disliked the company. I, uh, I was a horrible human being. Like I was, I felt like a robot, Mm. right? Like I went and just plugged myself in somewhere Mm. and I was in a relationship that was failing that had abuses on all sides going like a lot of it mental. And I'm like, wait a second, what the fuck? What's going on here? Hold up. Like, I, I used alcohol and I used cigarettes and I used all these things as a break, yeah. right? As a crutch. All right. I don't like this circumstance right now that's happening. This argument, this tense moment, I have to break it. All right. I'm going to go smoke. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm going to go make a drink. Even if I'm separated by a half of a wall, it's separation. Yeah. I was avoiding the, 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 the hurt. Yeah. I was avoiding the pain because I didn't want to fight it. I didn't want to deal yeah. with it. It was uncomfortable. Yeah. Guess what? It sucks. Like, and then I, I had my, my ex-wife was in, was, was, um, in a hospital in a treatment center for a while. And, um, I, my son was two, it just turned two. And, um, I just lost it, dude. Like I was in the corner of my kitchen. And I remember this like it was yesterday. My son's nine now. Like, I said, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Mm. I'm, I'm horrible. Like, I was not being a good dad. I was not, I was just generally not being a good human being. And I'm like, shit's got to change. That night, after the breakdown where my son looks up at me and says, Daddy, are you okay? In a cute little two-year-old voice. And edit that in and post. Um, kidding. I'm not editing any of this. Um, but he, he, he said, what, what's wrong? Mm. And I just lost it. Yeah. Like I just, I wrapped him up and I just fucking, I think I cried for about an hour. And, um, the next, that night I poured all the alcohol out of the house 
that next morning I crushed up the full pack of cigarettes that I had just gotten the day before and threw them away. Hmm. And uh, I said I was going to change. I quit the job a month later. Had had to go plug myself into a different nine to five, but it worked. Um, I started my record label. That was seven years ago. Still, and you're still with it today. Seventh anniversary was last week, bro. Wow! Congratulations. Like, so talk about putting something like that goal. Yeah. Like, small kid with no money from Rockford Illinois started a record label, and now. Motherfucker, we're gonna win a Grammy this year. Yeah. Like, I'm put like market. I mean, I'm predicting here. I'm solely speaking into the future. But yeah. like, it's May. It's two o three p.m. Central Standard Time on May eighteenth. Independent year. We're gonna win a Grammy. Mm. Like, but more important than that, we're changing musicians' lives. Yeah. Like we're, we're, we're taking an, a broken industry and making it better. And this is not a business talk, but like yeah, yeah. we're taking it and making it better because when musicians are good and they're creating, right. The world is a better place. Yeah. You're doing your role. Right. Like that's what makes me go. Yeah. So like I get to help people every day. Yeah. I mean, you I already, have- you just helped me hearing this, like just hearing like like what you where you came from, like that that darkness, right. and then having that moment. Dude, I never smiled. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Like this this grin on my face, <laughs> like would have been like this. Yeah. Like I never smiled. My teeth never shone. Wow. Like in any wow. photos from back in the day. I mean, that's an ex- that that's the example right there. You know, because like, I wasn't happy. Yeah. Like. And now, and, and, and as we get ready to wrap this up, um, first I want I want you to tell the people where they can where you can find you, and then I'm gonna I'll sign us off. Yeah, um, I mean you can find me on Twitter, or Instagram, just at Bob A, which is really confusing <laughs> on how to spell it. Don't, don't worry, everybody who's listening or yeah. watching this, whether you're watching it on YouTube or whatnot, I'm gonna drop the links. So that yeah. you guys can uh, go and check them out. So yes, yeah, so you can you can find me on Instagram or Twitter. I'm uh, at Bob A, or you can check out um, or on YouTube too. And then you can listen to my podcast called Purpose in the Youth. Uh, that's on Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud. Uh, it's on my YouTube channel. Um, and if they find me anywhere within that content, they'll be able to, to directly <laughs> reach out. But, um, right. Yeah. If you're listening or watching this and you are struggling, there are resources for you. I and if you don't want to reach out to me, by the way, this is how available I am. If you go into my Instagram page at Philip Ryan Black, my name that you see on the screen right here, or we'll see everywhere. Um, my literal cell phone number is in my bio of my Instagram. That rings this right, like reach out. Yeah. But if you don't want to reach out to me or you don't want to reach out to Bobby, there are resources for you. I mean, if you're if you're here in the U, if you're here in the U.S., I mean, there's amazing resources like to write love on our arms or uh, the Trevor Foundation or American American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Reach out to these people. These people are here for you guys. Yeah. They they're here to help. And I know my voice isn't that loud. I guarantee you, it's only going to get louder about this because once we get the stigma broken, what everybody is going to be in a better place. We're able to help, and we're not able. We're not having to read about or watch on social media, these negative circumstances, we're not having to lose any more of our heroes. And um, that's my vision for this. So Mm -hmm. if you're watching or listening to this and you're struggling, please reach out to me, please reach out to Bobby, please reach out to anybody. It could be a friend, a family member, I don't care. Find them, talk to them, be open and honest, but most importantly, be open and honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. Because when you're that, everything else gets better. But a major thank you to everybody who did tune in and listen to this because it was kind of chaotic to begin with. Uh, I massively appreciate, appreciate each and every one of you. Bobby, thank you so much for joining me. I'll you stick around for a moment after I end this broadcast. But um, as I've been- Before you end it, before you end it, let me just give you a shout out for, for doing this and for, for one, I appreciate you taking, like having me part of this journey with you. Uh, but more so thank you for building a platform that is really focused on 
capturing these stories and talking about things that aren't easy to talk about. Even for right. me, just to try to put this into words is, is difficult because there's just so much that goes in my head that I, I hope will positively help people. But uh, I appreciate you taking the time to, to get me thank on the show, but more so thank you for providing a platform for people to, to tell the thank story. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, I appreciate that. Um, Absolutely. So my friends, as I end every single video, whether it's a vlog, whether it's this, um, I end it with these three phrases. Be happy, have fun, and hustle hard. But there's no amount of the third that will make the first two happen. So mm. that being said, my friends, I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> see ya.